Passion Goddess. Today I am here to lecture you in regards to metaphysics. Most of you all might be wondering, what is metaphysics exactly? So metaphysics is a, a part of philosophy and it's, um, co it covers the spiritual nature and aspect of reality. So of course, you know, we think of reality and we get conformed to the concepts that are happening in our reality. However, a lot of things that are happening in our world today is based off of spiritual concepts more than actual worldly principles. And also, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, natural science of principles, spiritual principles, and spiritual laws and morals. So let's get right into our lesson today. I have a question. Why are you doing what you do? Do you know exactly why you are doing the things that you desire to do on a daily basis? Your, the spiritual realm can be affecting this decision that you make every day based off the things that you are investing your time in. So I want you to think about this question as we go throughout this lesson, wondering, what am I investing my time in? What am I doing? The second question I would like for you to consider is, are you ready to start enjoying your work? You know, a lot of us, um, millions of uh, people, we wake up every day dreading to go to work, you know, hating our positions. However, if you're operating in a spiritual perspective, then you can wake up fulfilled, loving your work. And that's why I want to give you uh, metaphysic lessons so you can learn how to enjoy your passions, enjoy your work through choosing one spiritual reason or one purpose to fulfill in your life. And uh, metaphysics just helps you to get more in contact with your eternal self, with your soul or your spirit. So you can know what were you designed to do, what were you created for, and then you can start accomplishing the things that you were actually designed to fulfill versus working and investing your time in something like you don't even enjoy. So my whole goal uh, with this video is helping you to commit to one task or one purpose to succeed right now in your life. So forget about everything. We're going to narrow it down to one purpose that you want to feel. And I always suggest my clients think about your childhood. What did you enjoy as a child? What are you uh, just thrilled about? You know, when you think about work, like um, you can see yourself doing it and not even get paid. You know, I know that's a cliche. You know, you have heard that metaphor tons and tons of times. However, that is the key to real success for finding, for you to find out exactly what you would like to fulfill versus you know, doing something that doesn't even matter. So let's jump right into the principles of goodwill. God sent us down here not only with a purpose to fulfill, but he sent us all down here with one will per person, okay, that came from his heart, that came from his dream, his passion. And I know you might be thinking, God has a dream, God has a purpose, God has a passion. Of course, because he's an emotional God. You know, God, he, he experienced love, he experienced hate, he experienced uh, sadness, he, he experienced anger, he experienced emotions just like we do. That's why we as humanity have emotions because we got that from our creator. So, the first principle is that practical law represents a possibility or action that is good. So with that being said, find an action. Find one purpose that you can take action upon and that it is a good action to fulfill your purpose. So that's why I mentioned earlier in the introduction, we want you to narrow it down to one purpose you want to do one thing you want to accomplish and then focus on committing all your time and energy into that one purpose because that is the spiritual principle of life find that one purpose to take action on secondly first determine your reason for doing something ask yourself why am i choosing to take action upon this purpose 
Why? You know, and you, and you can and you can think about examples. For example, um, maybe you grew up in a single parent household, so you want to help out children with uh, charity funds to help them not to suffer within those environments. Or maybe you grew up in a household that maybe you didn't have a lot of food growing up. So you want to go and help out the uh, the food bank. You know, you want to donate food to the food bank. Maybe you want to gather a team and, 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 and inform them of your vision and let them know, hey, let's go around and collect food from different grocery stores and maybe start a nonprofit organization where uh, households that are um, uh, um, you know, in poverty can come to your organization and get free food. So that's why I say find out the reason that you want to do that one purpose. Once you know that one purpose that you're going to take action on and you're going to commit to, then secondly, find out the reason, the hidden motive behind the reason. Because a lot of people, maybe they want to be a banker for, for hidden motive reasons. Maybe they want to, uh, you know, get involved in theft, you know, get involved in money laundering, you know, because some people, they start doing certain things for hidden motives, you know, purposes, not really based off of good intention. So you have to make sure that, you know, your intention, it's good. You got a good reason. You know, don't really get involved in doing anything because of, um, you know, from a bad motivation, you know. Also... Then determine to take action immediately upon that reason. So whatsoever you desire to fulfill this huge purpose, you know your reason now. So now you need to take action immediately. You know, a lot of us, and including myself, I'm actually going through this right now. You know, we want to we wanna like strategically plan a huge master plan before we actually take action on fulfilling our business idea. However, just start building. Find a team or find, even if it's just one individual that believes in your vision, not necessarily believe in you because you need to believe in you first and foremost because you have greatness in you. So as long as you got your belief, your support internally, then anything is possible. You can do it. But it's always great if you can find a team or one member that can get on board with what you believe as your vision. And once you all do that, just jump right out there. Start experimenting. Start trying out your business ideas. Start gathering feedback from different customers that you're dealing with. You know, even send out surveys and get information based off the price. Is the price good? Is the product or the service good? Moving on. Perform the task in a respectable manner. You know, a lot of people uh, in business and even at your, in your work environment, I'm sure you all can testify to this. You know, people are just naturally rude. You know, and that's not the way to be. If we're going to fulfill a good purpose, a good cause in life, and take action upon this, then make sure that, you know, you are polite and mannerable to others. That's very important. Because if people don't like you, then hey, you won't win the you won't win customers or even people uh, that can possibly invest in your business. Also, beware of a subject or task that sounds good. Keyword sounds good, but it's not really a good intention. And I know for a lot of you that might be like questionable. Like, if it's going to make me money, why should I be concerned if it sounds good? Why should, I, why, should I be certain if it, why should I be concerned if it has a good intention or not? Because think about it. Are you going to sell your soul out for money and just to gain possessions? Or are you really going to be a part of making a difference in this world? You know, it's about... Finding something that's going to create an impact in this world and empower others. You know, stand up for, or, uh, for a cause. Don't sell out just to make money. So make sure whatever you get yourself involved in, it actually has a good intention 
and it doesn't just sounds good and it's gonna make you money. You don't want to get involved with nothing like that. Uh, also, choose a positive reason for making an impact on the world. So we just spoke about that. Impact is key. What impact are you trying to make on this world? Exactly. Think about that for one second. What are you trying to change? Would you like to donate clothes maybe to children that uh, might not have school, school clothes to start with? Or do you want to donate school supplies to kids that are underprivileged? Think about it. How do you want to impact your community? How do you want to impact your target market? How, how do you want to impact your friends and family? Because all of this will be the way people judge you like wow you know uh this person is donating school supplies you will be judged and of course you know you're going to be judged in a good way because they're going to be like wow you know this person is really making a change it was so many underprivileged kids that didn't have school supplies but because of you you donated a hundred packs of school supplies to a certain community so make sure whatever your purpose is, whatever your reason for doing something, whatever you're going to commit to, whatever you're going to take action on, whatever, uh, uh, just make sure it has a good intention and that it will actually impact others. Also, to achieve something powerful in this world, you need a valuable, valuable idea that will be helpful and full of effort or energetic determination to make it happen. So in this world, if you want to achieve something powerful, achieve something that will impact this world, you want to uh, make sure that you got a good work ethic, that you're going to put your effort in 100%, that you're going to remain determined to fulfill that mission, and, and, and I noticed that um, the information that I, I got the source from, they say, have a, an energetic determination. So don't just be determined to fulfill that mission, but be energetic. Have that enthusiasm that will promote success. Because, of course, if you're striving to fulfill that mission, you definitely need energy. Because we know, hey, if you don't have your coffee in the morning, you might go to work depressed. You might go to work sad. You might go to work and not put your all into your work. But we know if we wake up in the morning and we got our energy collected for the day, we know we can nail anything. We can do anything. So make sure you have your energy. Make sure you remain determined. No matter when people come and try to discourage you and put you down, continue to keep hope in yourself. You can do it. I'm telling you that anything is possible for you in your life right now. You have greatness within you. Make a change. Also, well actually, finally, do not waste your time working on something that is absolutely meaningless to you or your self-work. So to save your reputation, don't invest your time in things that are wasting your time, actually. Don't, don't waste your time. You know, your time is an investment, you know. Um, if you know about sowing and reaping, you know, most of us, we think like, hey, I can only sow money. No, you can actually sow time. You can sow conversation. I'm actually sowing into you all's lives right now by sowing knowledge into you. So you can sow anything. If you give someone a bag of food for free, if you give someone uh, that child a bag of school clothes or school supplies for free, you are sowing into their lives. It doesn't necessarily have to be money. So just know that if you're going to sow your time into something, make sure that it's a valuable uh, project. Make sure that it's going to build up your self-worth. You know, don't, don't, don't sell your time into something that's going to degrade your persona, you know. So think about that when you're deciding upon what reason, what purpose to commit to. Make sure it's going to be something that's going to be valuable, that is going to be worth you investing your time, and that is going to build your reputation, you know. 
So that is the principles of goodwill. So if you follow all of these steps, then you will move forward in your life, accomplishing your purpose without a problem. My whole purpose here is to inform you all based off of how to use your willpower to fulfill a good cause or will, the will of God in this world. That's my whole purpose today. So I hope you all have been informed on how to use your willpower, your determination to go forth and fulfill a good cause in this world. Moving on to practical rules of two wills. If you don't know it, we all have two willpowers. You might be thinking, two willpowers, really? Yeah, you have a one, one willpower is for your uh, survival purposes. One willpower is for you to fulfill your actual purpose in this life. And that willpower is known as God's will. Excuse me. So you have to think about this for a moment. Which will are you investing your time in? Are you investing your time in just surviving in life? Just barely getting by? Living check to check? Or are you actually investing your willpower? Or, I'm sorry, or are you investing your time in the will of God? Which is the second willpower. Because the will of God is your purpose, what you was designed and created to do on this earth. So I want to talk about the practical rules of the two willpowers to inspire you to invest more of your time into the first willpower, which is God's will for your life, which is your purpose. Don't focus too much of your time into surviving in that willpower aspect. So let's get right into it. Imperative hypothetical is the first willpower. And that is the willpower of God. And then imperative categorically is the willpower of survival purposes. So let's talk a little bit about thriving in the, the, the will of God. The will of God is a good action towards something else that can be beneficial to you or others so let me restate that the willpower of God is a good action towards yourself or someone else so anything that is that will benefit you or that will be beneficial to others that's operating in the will of God and let me just break it down real quick because I know when people hear God's will. You automatically get in this Christianity mind frame and you start thinking like, hey, well, I don't want to preach. You know, I don't want to own a church. But the fact of the matter is God's will is not all about that. God's will is about you bringing forth a purpose that no one in this world can fulfill but you. So if you were to die with that purpose being unnoticed, unfulfilled, then you just like, you didn't put out in the, in the atmosphere something that God gave to you personally to show to the world, which is your talent. Your talent, whatever your talent is, whatever of your skills, your experience is, that is all God's will. He gave you all of that to be a steward over it. That means to take care of it, to continue to help others with your, your talents, your skills, your experience. You know, just like me, you know, my talent is sharing knowledge. I'm passionate about sharing knowledge. I'm also passionate about fashion. That's why you heard me state in the beginning of this video, I am the fashion goddess and you, you will see videos like that. But let's just stay on point because I'm about fashion and education, meaning I like to inspire people with knowledge and then, of course, I got my fashion stuff going on, too. But back to the subject. God's will is fulfilling your, or, or should I, let me rephrase that. God's will is for you to use your talent, your skills, your experience, period. That's it. So, what, whichever one of your talents are good, 
take action upon it today. Take action to use your talent in whatever way. You know, I feel like one of my skills is communication skills. I feel like another one is leadership skills. So, you know, I'm actually using my talent within this video to uh, communicate to you all the knowledge that I have learned. So I'm sharing this information and I'm actually, I actually took a stand to become a leader and make a YouTube video. I mean, we all know like everyone is becoming YouTubers nowadays, but if you really, if you are a YouTuber, you know like the process. In the beginning, like you doubted yourself. In the beginning, you had to think like, is this something that I really want to do in my life or not? So I went through the same thing. But it takes a great leader to take that stand and make that decision and say, you know what? I'm actually going to become a YouTuber and make YouTube videos because you know you are impacting people in whatever you are good at. So you might be good at something totally different from what I'm good at, but at the end of the day, we all out here being YouTubers making an impact and showing others things that we know. I especially love you uh, DIY folks. Keep up the good work. Moving on. Um, and God's will is all about having the purpose and doing something with it. So having the purpose is what your dream. We all have had dreams as a, a child. So whatever your dream was as a child, start doing something with it. That is God's will. So I'm breaking it down. Also, pay attention to the possibilities, the opportunities that you can have available in your life right now and then set your mind on achieving those those purposes those possibilities those opportunities because we all get exposed to different opportunities on a daily basis if you feel those opportunities are connected to your destiny to your purpose then those opportunities actually have potential so take out the time. Maybe that's something you need to invest your time in. But of course, if you see that it has a hidden motive involved in it, and it's not a good, maybe it's of evil, maybe it's of um, you know um, things that's lined up with you know um, just wickedness, things that you don't want to get involved with. In, then, then let that let that go. Let that decision go. Don't even decide to do any of that. Also, God's will is an actual, actual, actualization of His good wish, His good vision. Sorry. So, whatever you your talents is, know that God gave you that vision. He gave you that dream. And it's an actuality in your life. So now it's up to you to make it a reality in your life. Finally, God's will is rooted from a problematical or a, a assertive practical principle. So let me say that again in simpler terms. Whenever you decide on a purpose to fulfill, God's will for your life is always about use your gift, use your talent, use your skills or experience to solve a problem in this world and be assertive at making it happen. That's the basic way I can say it to you on simpler terms. Whatever problem, maybe you dealt with you know, um, your parents being divorced as a child. There's opportunities out here for you to go out and mentor kids that, are, that their parents are facing divorce or going through divorce or have been divorced and they're uh, having tantrum, tantrum, tantrums because they're mad about the situation. Take out the time. Find an organization. Build an organization and actually give back into these kids what no one didn't give to you because maybe you were just like them and you thought to yourself if someone would have came along when I was a kid and, and told me hey you know this life is gonna be okay then I would have turned out better okay guess what that problem now you have the opportunity to solve it so go out into the world and whatever problem you face and you want to change now as an adult 
go out and find others. Whether it's teens, uh, adolescents, uh, seniors, or uh, uh, or um, or or um, or if it's uh, family and friends, go out and make a change within their lives because you still have an audience. You still have a congregation that God has set on your path. It's not all about changing the whole wide world. It's not all about changing everyone in the entire world. It's about changing the people that God placed on your path. Even if, it, if that's at work, if that's in your business, if that's in your college, if that's in your school, if that's in your neighborhood or your community. Change others. Help them solve their problem. So all of that is the imperative, that's what it's called in metaphysics, imperative hypothetically willpower. And that is, of course, God's will. So moving on to imperative categorically, which is the second willpower, and as I stated, you are operating in your survival instinct as an animal. So let's get an idea of what survival looks like when you're operating in that willpower. So, your survival willpower is just something you do that's necessary. It's a necessary thing that you need to make happen. And you conform. You conform to one reason to just make that thing happen. Why? Because your sole purpose is to survive. To survive. Sorry. You don't care about solving problems, helping others. You don't care if it's good. All you care about is surviving. For example, I know a lot of you out there might be vegans now, and I salute to you. That's awesome. But it's a lot of other people that's still struggling with eating meat and dairy, you know. So with that being said, their whole instinct is about surviving. They're going to eat whatever to survive versus making a positive change and eating vegan, you know. So you got to think about that. Do you want to operate in this survival instinct of your brain or do you want to operate in God's will? Also, it is an action that is necessary, necessary to perform for your survival. So just going back to the basics of this, of uh, the survival willpower. You know, you're all about doing what's necessary to survive and taking action on whatever you got to do. Some people, you know, maybe if you have kids and you don't have money for food, you might be tempted to go to the store and steal groceries because, hey, your kids are starving and you need to feed them. So we can look at that person and judge them based off of, oh, you're crazy. You know, you can get yourself in trouble. But at the end of the day, they're operating in that second willpower to survive. So like I said, once again, which willpower do you want to operate in? God's will or your survival instinct? The survival instinct, it, it's also, it has no significant purpose whatsoever in mind to fulfill. So it's, it's the, that's the least of its concerns. It's doing something positive for humanity or even itself. Its whole goal is just to survive. Finally, it does not perform for anything or anyone. Just solely for the survival of itself. So the survival instinct is not concerned about you her, him, them. It's concerned about self. And actually, you know, I, I look at this willpower as the ego willpower. It's, it's consumed in selfish, um, selfish ways, self-centered, what self-centeredness ways. It's all about how can I survive. So, for example, if you are. Um, a drug dealer and you sell drugs okay why do you think that person is doing that because they're operating in that second willpower to survive they can care less about going to jail they can care less about killing killing people hurting people their whole concept 
is to survive. So my whole goal is to discourage you from operating in that survival instinct. Our lives are more than survival. Don't just exist in this world. Live life to the fullest. And the only way you can live life to the fullest is by operating in God's will for your life. That's the only way that you can operate. So focus on the one task that you want to accomplish in your life and put all of your effort into that idea or that vision and then watch it manifest. So find an idea, one idea to commit to. Commit yourself to that vision and watch it come to life in your life. Watch it come to life. Secondly, uh, I wanted to make you aware there are two types of willpowers, which I stated, the imperative, hypothetical, and the imperative categorically. Okay, and the imperative hypothetical is the actual good vision that can solve any problem if you are certain at getting things done. That's this operating God's will. Be assertive at getting things done. For example, you find a good reason to take action, to do something purposeful for others or the world in general. So, make that change. This is summing everything up. Operate in the imperative, hypothetical, willpower, which is what? God's will. And make a change. Impact others. Secondly, the survival instinct, or the imperative, categorically, willpower, is a reason to do something solely for the survival of yourself because it is necessary. For instance, you have no significant purpose in mind for performing that kind of will. No purpose whatsoever. You just survive it. So I encourage you, do not live and die surviving. Don't live your life just surviving. Don't die um, in that survival instinct. Die knowing that you fulfill God's will. You fulfill your purpose in this life. In order to stop yourself from doing the wrong tasks in your life, you have to keep narrowing down. Like, what's important for me at this time if you want to succeed? What's important to you? Keep narrowing down because, of course, you all know we can get tons of ideas. Tons of ideas here and there, here and there from this person and that person. But narrow it down to what you love to do, what you are passionate about. And go forth into the world and make it happen out here. Make it happen, you guys. Make it happen. Make it happen. So with that being said, I hope this video has showed you to do something with your life that's going to be purposeful that others are actually going to benefit from. So I hope that question has been answered through this informative video. And I hope you are ready to start enjoying what you do, enjoying your work. So I just want to let you know that my sources were cited from a, a book called Fundamental Principles of the Metaphysics of Morals. The author is Emmanuel Kent. So of course you all can look up this information and um, and get the knowledge for yourself you know because we all learn in different ways maybe based off of my learning technique or lecture maybe you didn't get some things that's the book go check it out so my conclusion is for you to um, get the message uh, fulfill something that is purposeful one thing that can impact this world. That's my conclusion. And my call for action is for you to do a self-analysis on things that you love doing and the things that you're wasting your time with. And stop doing those things that you don't love. So I challenge you. Take a notebook, take your phone out, and actually make a list of things that I hate, things that I love. 
And then once you do that, of course, you want to stop wasting your time on things that you hate. And you want to start investing your time on things that you actually love. So once you do that, then narrow your the things that you love down to one. To one thing. Take action and fulfill the purpose to the fullest. Once again, I am the fashion goddess. I absolutely enjoyed you all. Just taking out the time in your day to listen to this video and get knowledge. Knowledge is power. So go out and empower others. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you all. God bless you.